The thing that should never happen is God sacrificing himself through his son to redeem humanity. That should never happen. It should never get that bad that that's what has to happen. You know, somebody said something interesting the other day, somebody that I do find, and I can't remember his name right now, but uh, an intelligent speaker about uh, spiritual things on YouTube. He said, think about uh, why you don't want to sin. You know, why we, 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 we struggle not to sin. You know what I mean? We actually make an effort. Is because we don't want to crucify our Lord over and over again. And I, I sat, I thought about that, and I thought about that for two days. That every time you sin, it's like, yeah, he's got to, he has to be strung up on the cross again. No, we don't want that. Once is enough. So we'll fight it, because we want, we will love our Lord, you know. So we, we, we don't want to give pain. It almost shows this relationship between crucifixion, pain, and the need for redemption, that we need redemption all over again that we need redemption all over again. It's like, well, let's get it right the first time. Or let's see if we can minimize that sin. Because, I mean, I know it's really difficult, especially when it comes to the to the tongue. People say all kinds of things. Uh, now, where's my... Uh, Calamity. Well, I pulled a few verses about calamity, you know, thinking about the hurricane and thinking about, you know, the, the, all the shootings and things that uh, go on. Here's an obvious one, Psalm 1818. 18. Easy to remember. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Yay! <laughs> Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and creating calamity. I am the Lord who does all these. Isaiah, the famous Isaiah 45, 7. Proverbs 126 also. I will also laugh at your calamity, says the Lord. I will mock when your dread comes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, God is not mocked. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. There was a great earthquake, such as there had not been since man came to be upon the earth. So great an earthquake was it, and so mighty. Another calamity one. Like an east wind, I will scatter them before the enemy. I will show my back and not my face in the day of their calamity. Jeremiah 8.17 Vengeance is mine and retribution in due time. Their foot will slip, for the day of their calamity is near, and the impending things hastening upon them. And I, I think these, reading these today, is it, it, it's a kind of a prophetic statement. It is a prophetic statement in saying that don't worry. I know that all of you who want justice, and I know how it is, you know, that feeling of giving up, but you've got to understand it won't be on man's terms. I mean, from here on out, we are kind of in a territory where the spiritual aspect of things is becoming more solid than the material. God will have his justice. And justice will be swift. And, it's, and you know, in each individual life, we see miracles and, you know, and calamities over and over and over and over again. We see people getting their comeuppance over and over and over and over again. I mean, but this sort of collective justice that people are going for, you know, trying to go at the system and all that, I think we just give it to the Lord, you know, the fact that these people are, are harming our innocent. We need that to stop. 
And we just pray in Jesus' name for the human trafficking on every level, including children, stops in Jesus' name. Amen. In America and around the world. It has to stop around. can't just stop in America. It's got to stop around the world. And that has to be dealt with. That is the, that's the biggest sin there is right now. The preying upon children, trafficking, killing of the innocent for the purpose of selfish perversions of sicko people that have no conscience. You know, they have the same kind of conscience as they had in, you know, Coppola's apocalypse now, uh, going into a village and killing everybody in the village so you could go surfing. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's that kind of madness. And that's, that's the same exact satanic madness. It's almost like the movie serves as an allegory in a way for how really messed up life is. The people that are calling the shots are psychotic, but they f- are functional. And nobody will question them because they have positions of power. And yet they go into complete madness and glee when they're doing some awful thing. It becomes a high for them to do the wrong thing, to do the thing that that, that uh, keeps man in bondage, to do the thing that ruins the earth. You just have to be careful about it because people are not going to accept the eradication of uh, child trafficking, the providing of children into these pedophile networks, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you also have a demand from people that have demand for those things, and they, they go across the entire spectrum, poor, medium, very wealthy, ultra elite, uh, got this problem. Well, one of the problems, one of the reasons that it's metastasized so badly, especially, you know, in America, is because people thought it couldn't happen here. People kept looking the other way. I I know people like who are working in Hollywood and know about all this stuff from working even on these projects and movies and things that, that, um, and they know what's going on. And now I think it'd be very hard for them because it's so literally in your face. You would have to actually, well, I know so-and-so is raping those children, but I need a job, so I'm going to be happier. No, you're going to go mad. You're going to go insane. It's as if you're doing the abusing. That's how out of the closet it is. And they can't keep it out of the closet. They can need a war. You know, the other thing I have to say is this. They need a war... War with China, war with anybody right now to, to get this off the, you know, get this focus out of here. You know, they neutralized Pizzagate, they neutralized a lot of it, but they just needed to stop. They want no one questioning the motives of the leaders. Like I say, celebrities, media, government, it has to stop. They want everyone silenced now. They're striking people off Facebook, off Twitter, off YouTube just for, um, uh, you know, I think if you said the Pledge of Allegiance now, they may just ban you as hate speech. Uh, they see the Bible as hate speech because it speaks against homosexuality. So they go, therefore, it's illegitimate. Well, you know, therefore, uh, <laughs> justify murder then. It shows Satanism, revelry, the the golden calf as evil. Well, that's being intolerant. Golden calf, it's what's going on in our society. Look, for me, I've got no one I'm trying to uh, impress here. I'm just trying to help people to, the, the main thing is this. I, I'm assuming there's a lot of people that tune in here, that, and, and that you're not that many. You're a few. You're a pittance, really. Just a few little people. We're all just a few little people. You're trying to cope with the situation, and it's hard day to day to cope knowing what you know. 
and you know feeling the pressure of people around you and and then knowing how evil it is what they're all caught up and then then being told to love them anyway and you're trying to live with it and you're trying to not be cut out so you're trying to eat trying to survive but now there's everywhere you turn is another devil looking at you as a as a target and it's just it's it's really you know excruciatingly miserable If you didn't know so much, would it be easier? Of course it would be. If you didn't know what was going on, then there wouldn't be, you know, you know the worst thing is where you, you, you state things. That, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. It's already been debunked by Geraldo or whatever. You know what I mean? And then, then, then you're, you know, basically now you're nuts and now you're marked as the crazy guy. When it's because of their stupidity, you're called crazy. Well, they're willful stupidity. They're, they're um, accidentally on purpose stupidity. They're looking the other way stupidity. They're, they're you know, because if you knew everything, you, you, you probably wouldn't be able to take a breath. You'd probably just be so horrified and stunned and traumatized you wouldn't be able to do anything. I mean, I think, I think you know, we, we know how deep the rabbit hole goes, but Obviously, if you were exposed literally to any of that stuff, say on even on TV or something, it's something that would jar that ancient memory. Why did they form all these things as the foundations of basic life? Because life here is temporary. It's all about free will. And they don't take kindly to their property, you, me, getting away. And it really just comes down to that. They want a harvest, and God has his harvest. And the harvest is basically, uh, God's harvest is secure. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He'll have exactly the number, he'll have exactly what he knows he has as his harvest, he has. The rest will be, in a without being nihilistic or annihil, without any annihilation, the rest are really as if they never were, because the world itself here is as if it never was. As you move on, you know, this idea of time and space is if it would be like a concept, uh, a device would be you know rendered moot or invisible or or not 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 a. Uh, factor in what actual reality is. And um, the more that I've seen, you know, and I've really seen more than I would ever want to see anywhere ever again, but everything I've seen makes me want to move on with the Lord. I don't really want to go through this again because I feel like I've, okay, I got it. You know what I mean? There's really not much more to explain about it. You know, it's, it is what it is. And, um, you know, we went through the Bible, so many teachings, so many readings, so many verses, and I still couldn't see the world system for what it really was. I still couldn't get it. It took many years to break that programming uh, let's call it Disneyland programming, you know, this is American programming, I guess, because things are a little more, you know, life is shown to be a little bit more cruel in other societies. This one, we tend to shelter our children. We have. Um, it's funny. We shelter our children here, but they're exposed to the maximum. Of evil. That makes it all the better attacking them, right, for the, for the sickos. <laughs> the more innocent they are, right, the more they don't know anything the tougher they are from from being presented with how cruel the world can be because the world is terribly cruel. I mean, you know, you wind up on the wrong side of a thing and just, it, it, you know, you're just blown away. It's terribly cruel. It's almost like indiscriminately cruel. And if kids understand that, then when they see those things happening, they're not going to be so freaked out. But we don't do that with it. We, we, we teach everything is bliss. And if you're having a problem, then you need help. Then you're the culprit. You're doing something wrong. 
you're doing something wrong. Uh, I contend that if you do have a problem with this entire situation, uh, the entire enchilada, you are doing something right. You know what I mean? You, you're doing something right. And if you, you know, so, so there's quite a few people have dropped out. They've doing their own thing and they're not going to toe the line because they just see it as, as not because they, they, it's because they're playing into the hands of evil by towing the line, but because they see the entire thing as an absurd joke. And so with that good news, you know, flaunt your freedom, right? No, why not? Because other people are hostile. That's right. Other people are your hell now. They don't, they see that light in you, that freedom in you that Jesus gave you when he covered you with his blood, when you got that uh, release from bondage and you could see in your language, you talk differently, you see things differently. They can't see what you see. They don't speak the way you speak. This is all something that's happened to you. And um, some of these people, it's just as well. That's just the way they are. I think most of us would have seen through the uh, sacrificial cults of the Mayans and the uh, and the Aztecs, the Egyptians, various others. I think we would have easily seen through that. So we would be rendered crazy. You need help. Because they can see you're not in, you know, you're not soaked into the system at all. If you see the truth, you're, you know, obviously not in it. If you see the lie and believe that's the truth, then that's, that's really being in it. And, um, you know, if you see the truth and live by that, then, then things are difficult because there's that oppression, you know, from family, friends, employment. There's that, just that, you know, potential conflict. I, I, you know, don't feel I have a conflict with people at all. And people don't have to believe anything that I believe for me to love them or, or to be loved back by them. I, I don't need, you know what I mean? And I've, I've no run into people that they don't, they're not really into what I'm into with this podcast, but they listen because they like to tune in. I said, you're, you're, you are definitely one. It's just going to, you know, God's going to just work with you the way he's going to work with you. Meanwhile, I'll lift you up in prayer. And um, ask the Lord to 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 reveal Himself, you know, because I know once you see the truth, if you're an earnest person, you see the truth, uh, you're not going to just suddenly sell that out for the lie. You're going to go with the truth. So there's a lot of people in that kind of on that plane right now. They're coming out of the world system. They're just they've seen some things that have scared them to death, and then others are just good people. They don't want to be part of. You know, a, a, you know, you know, a murder ink operation. They don't want to be in a criminal cabal. They're trying to be good to their fellow man. They want to be a better person. They know they're not perfect. They know they're sinners. You know, I mean, what's the main sin though that a gentle person does? Well, maybe you drink too much. Maybe you're fornicating too much. But you're not murdering. <laughs> You know, what I mean? not that that's any better or worse. I'm just saying you're not, you know, you're not out, you know, in, in, in you know, becoming a member, you're know, joining into that awful reality. But most everybody does say the emperor has got a beautiful new suit of clothes on. Most people are going to, you know, they're going to, for their own survival, kind of look the other way on, on the evildoers and, I saw that in Hollywood years and years ago with some very famous people. And um, <laughs> what I'm saying is I, I, I'm not sure the whistleblowing approach is the right approach. I think the prayerful approach is the right approach. If it makes sense to us, it's probably wrong, you know. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, let's... Uh, I think we, we more than covered the next installment here, and you heard that. So let's go on to uh, 
finding a nice way out of this pod to to our mark here. Um, Dash is going on. Okay. I'll see you next time. God bless you, each and every one. We'll keep a prayer vigil for the hurricane. I, I just keep, I just pray that the Lord will just, just.